Well, hey there. Welcome back to Minecraft and the Create Mod. And to subliminal messages over my right shoulder. Yeah, right there. Yeah, see? Okay. A anyway, so here we are in our creative world here. And we're going to talk about filters and tunnels. There's some things that we've, we've kind of mentioned, but we didn't really cover in too much detail in previous episodes. So I thought, you know what? Maybe uh, maybe that's something we should, uh, we should talk about. Certainly with the Create Mod, Filters and tunnels and and the like give you a lot more options when it comes to sorting items out. For example, filling up a shulker box or something when you go mining and plopping it in place onto a, a sorting system. And vanilla Minecraft has options available, but they're not awesome. Now, the Create Mod has some pretty awesome options, and let's go over them now, shall we? So as you can see here, we've got this pretty wild looking set of belts here. And it's just moving this random assortment of items back and forth from, from this chest right here. They're going into the chest and then they're coming right back out. So I'm just going to use this to kind of demonstrate what we can do with tunnels and filters. Tunnels themselves on a straight belt don't do a lot. I mean, they look kind of cool, but really they don't do a whole lot. Tunnels could be made of andesite and brass. And here's an example of some andesite tunnels here. So we're going to go ahead, just put these over the belt. And when you get three or more, then you get the option of these uh, of these windows that allow you to look through into the belt. So that's kind of cool. And I think if we take the wrench, we can actually remove the, remove the window. Can you remove the window here? No, you can't. Okay. So in the, uh, except for the end pieces, you can add or remove windows that allow you to look in. And brass allows the same thing. So you can see I've kind of already added some here, but then remove them. There you go. So you can do the same thing with brass. And again, with the wrench, you can remove it as needed. Now, the real benefit of these things comes when you come to a belt intersection, such as this one right here. Now, obviously, if you take a look, you're going to see all these assorted items moving around. And it makes for quite a mess. But with these tunnels... We can fix that to some degree. So let's actually start with the brass tunnel right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the brass tunnel and put it right over here. Now notice that it's actually starting to split the tunnels into different directions. It's starting to split the output into different directions. And sorry for the herky-jerkiness here. I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that, but it, it does. I think it's the, uh, it's just, it's a mod belts that they, they just act funny that way. If you take a look right here, you're going to see these little slots. It says filter. Looks like the, uh, it looks like the chute, the brass chute. Is that what they're called? Let me see. I can't remember now. Uh, the brass funnels. It looks kind of like the front of the brass funnels, right? And it serves the same function. So let's do a thing here. We're actually going to take... Let's take, uh, let's take polished granite. So we're obviously sorting polished granite here. We've got some polished granite on the belt. Let's go ahead and see if we can apply this. And we should start to see this uh, funnel right here, this exit from the tunnel will only allow polished granite to exit. And then on this one over here, we're going to set it as polished andesite. So now the only thing that should exit this belt right here is polished andesite and there we go now that we've got polished andesite coming out of here i want to show you something else with the andesite tunnel now the andesite tunnel doesn't have the filter options it's uh it's it's closer to a beginning game item but it doesn't have the option of sorting but what it does have as you will see is it if a stack goes through it it will remove one item from the stack and reroute it through another exit. So you can see that's already happening. So every time the andesite comes through here, it's polished andesite through the andesite tunnel. Imagine that. The stack comes through and it just pulls one item off the stack. So that's the benefit of the andesite tunnel. But let's get back to the brass tunnel right here, which is still trying to sort stuff out for us. Now, everything else is heading toward this third opening right here. Now, I'm trying to think. Here's something we can do. 
So here's something we can do. Let's go ahead. So let's take this regular filter. It's just called a filter. Let's take it and we're gonna right click it in the air here. And it's gonna give you this little graphic user interface. It's gonna give you this grid. And on this grid, you can add items that will pass through the filter. In other words, they will be the only items allowed out of the shoot. Or we can actually reverse it and create a deny list so that anything else can go through it except for the items that we name. So we can actually reverse the list, but we're not gonna do that now. Let's go ahead, what else have we got? We've got diorite on the list or on the belt. We've got slime balls, we've got diamonds, and I do believe we have lily pads. And those are items that are still on the belt. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add that. We're gonna hit the checkbox and let me take a look at it. Yes, and you can see there's an allow list right there. Polished diorite, slime ball, diamond, and lily pad. So that's what it's going to allow. So we can take that filter. Oops, so we can stand there, how about that? And plop it right in there. And we should start to see that the diorite comes out and we'll start to see the diamonds come out. Now, we, they were already coming out, we knew that. But I wanna show you something, just to show you that it still indeed works. Let's take this mechanical belt right here. We'll take that belt and we will put it in this box, in this chest. Okay, so the belt comes out. You can see it right there. Now watch what happens. Boom. Now you see it stops up the belt because it's got nowhere to go. None of the filters are going to allow it to go through. So then you, you hold your cursor, you hold your little crosshair on the brass tunnel right there and notice the little interface right there that you can see with your engineer goggles. It says, it shows a little carrot there. It says mechanical belt times one. It's currently trying to distribute that, but it can't. So what you can do is it says right click to retrieve. So just right click and it pulls that belt out of there and allows that filter to do its thing. Allows that chute to do its thing, that tunnel. So there you go. That works pretty well. That shows you how the brass tunnel works. Now, one other thing, we're gonna show you, there's another filter, it's called an attribute filter. So let's take yet another brass tunnel, we're gonna put it right here. Oh, and just, just because reasons, I wanna just do this, there we go. Boom, how do you like that? Just cover it, right? I like that. Okay, so now we've got this thing evenly distributing what's here, and it's not really doing anything for us, but we can, use this attribute filter. And let me pick one out here. I've already used one already. So, okay, so full disclosure, I tried to record this before, but had some issues with OBS for some reason. It was just recording really badly. I don't know why, but hopefully it goes better this time. Let's see. So let's take our attribute filter. Notice I've already got one filled out. That's a little bit of a spoiler there. Right click it in the air as before. And now it says add reference item. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take the slime ball. Let's say we're not actually wanting to filter specifically slime balls, but what we want is the list of attributes that's in the slime ball that the, that the filter recognizes. And notice we've got three attributes that we can choose from. First, it's tagged with forge slime balls. So I guess that means we can make the filter so it specifically removes slime balls. Also, if we use our, our mouse wheel here, we can go down to the next one, which says it's in the group miscellaneous. And if you look in the creative uh, menu, you'll notice that the slime ball is in the group miscellaneous. And also then it says was added by Minecraft. I guess that means it's an original Minecraft item and not uh, create maybe so let's let's try that let's see what if we take uh, what if we take um, this belt right here let's try that okay it's added by create yeah there we go it's in group create added by create okay so that's not a, an original Minecraft item so let's and if we take the lily pad and notice it's in the group decoration blocks well how about we do this we'll pull that off and we'll put the slime ball in and we'll set it to group miscellaneous, all right? So anything that's in the miscellaneous group, such as diamonds, will get sorted. 
So what we need to do then is click the uh, add attribute to the list, or we could add the opposite attribute, meaning it's not in the group. So like before, we can reverse the filter. Pretty cool. But let's just go ahead and add it to the list. And it uses this little graphic of a name tag. It doesn't really mean anything other than it shows the list of attributes that we've selected. And in this case, it's anything in the group miscellaneous, we want it to filter. Hit the check mark. So now, let's, see, we, let's verify it by right-clicking it again. Yes, the attribute is still there. Awesome. Continue to right-click it. Okay, so right here on the, uh, on the, not on the main belt, but on the extension that comes out to the side, let's go ahead and put this filter right there. So what we are going to see right there is that anything with the miscellaneous, with the miscellaneous um, tag is going to be filtered. And there goes the diamonds, the whole stack, not half of it, the whole stack. And let's see, what else do we have? Yep, diamonds get routed this way. And we should see the slime balls get routed this way and nothing else should be allowed because they're not in the miscellaneous group. So there you go, that's how you use an attribute filter. So as you can see, we've got a couple of very powerful options that we can use for sorting items. Now, as before, we took one of these chutes right there. It's got the filter on it. And we can use a filter on that as well, one of these other filters, or we can use an individual item. But what that allows is, it, you see these funnels, chutes, I keep saying chutes, if, if you notice, you can only add six of them around this chest. And if you just try to use the individual item here, like, I don't know, let's say a polished diorite, you can only, if you do that on all of them, you can only put six funnels. But with the use of these filters right here, you can add a whole bunch of different items. So that works really well in any kind of sorting system that you want to build. So now that you see how these filters work, Let's go ahead and take a look at our survival world and see how things are going there. Okay, welcome back to the survival world. And you might recognize our crazy machine behind us that's busy harvesting things. And you'll notice I finally completed our trading hall, which I'm gonna be calling Trader Joe's for obvious reasons. So yeah, let's uh, take a look around and see what's going on. What new things have been added? Again, I tried to record this before, I even did a time lapse. I may or may not include it, I haven't decided yet. We'll see how it goes. But um, you can see the new windmill behind us powering something else, which I will show you.
So, first of all, with this thing, I've learned something. I've been very busy, even though I haven't recorded anything. I've actually been very busy. And it turns out that this machine here does not like unloaded junks. It's a very big machine, and when I leave the area, and uh, it, of course, the chunks unload, and when I come back, depending on where it is in its uh, harvesting cycle, sometimes this shaft breaks for some reason. I don't know why, and it can leave this machine stranded halfway across the field. And when it does that, it parks the machine, and as soon as it parks, it turns any farmland that it's over top of into un untilled land and that means i have to go back with the hoe and replant all the crops and it's kind of a pain in the neck and of course i have to repair the shaft which again for whatever reason i don't know why it can be a pain in the neck so what i've done is i've included this manual switch on the clutch so that when i leave the area what i'll do is i'll bring the machine if you notice the machine is three blocks wide so what I can do is, when the machine gets down to this end, I can flip this switch to disengage the clutch and it just parks it right here. So that way there's no chance of it getting stranded on the farm. Let's head this way. Let's take a look at the new trading hall. And Joe Mama has been busy. Joe Mama's getting busy. Okay, we've looked at this before, I think. Have we not? Well, maybe we have not. I didn't tell you guys about this. I moved the harvesting portion, the sorting portion of this machine over to this side. So now all the crops get dropped right in there using the filters and everything that we described. But we'll get to that. I also want to show you, we've got a whole bunch of librarians here, a whole bunch of all kinds of villagers. You can hear them deep in thought. And you can see we've got our mending books for one emerald apiece. I had almost forgotten. There's another one. And I think we got one more. Is it one more? Do we? No, we got some unbreaking for one apiece. I had almost forgotten that uh, you, efficiency five and then something else. These aren't the only ones. I've got other librarians around. I've got farmers here. I've also got cartographers so we can do our... Um, our Grian trading. We we are more than able to do our Grian trading here. It's very nice. I have been busy inundating these guys with zombies and healing them, weakening them, healing them over and over again so we can get these trades down really low. And that one, ooh, that guy, I must have made him mad or something because he's back up to uh, charging me two pieces of paper for an emerald. I had him down to one, but whatever, that's fine. Oh, this guy as well. Maybe he won't go down anymore because... No, he should. He should. These guys should go down some. Okay, so we've got farmers. They're giving us their veggies. Basically, one veggie for one emerald. I mean, we're, we're doing pretty awesome trading here. So, no complaints. Hopefully the... I, like I said, I tried to record this before, but the, the uh, frames per second just went out the window. And they seem to be doing okay now. We've got, I got masons here that we can trade with and more villagers or more uh, librarians rather. Um, again, uh, they're a work in progress. Some of them are still a work in progress. So you can see them here. I've also got clerics and I've got the clerics so that I can get rid of the zombie flesh. I've got, cause I've got a ton of zombie flesh at the uh, XP farm. And might as well make the most of it. Also, is it these guys? Maybe the masters? If you go down there, yes, they've got nether wart. Now, I didn't even realize that was something that they can trade. So, let's take a look um, at something else. Now, I've got some shulker boxes here for some trading items, making them available. But, let's take a look. I've got these bubble vaders right here this one goes down to the mine which i've started to develop but this one here actually goes to our sorting system as it stands right now so we've got our beetroots we've got our wheat our watermelons which by the way we have a watermelon assembly machine up there which you can sort of make out kind of we'll take maybe take a closer look at it 
but basically it's a machine that takes the melon slices and forms the watermelon so it saves us gotta love the create mod i'm telling you and then we've got pumpkins let's see uh, carrots yeah that's full those are all full and nether wart and i'll show you the nether wart farm that i've made so far what time is it it's, uh 14:49. okay so this farm is kind of like the one topside, except that it operates on the day-night cycle. Now, right now it's mid-afternoon, so it this machine is parked on this side. But what we should see is that later on in the day. Oh, by the way, can we look from here into the uh, into the hidden melon assembly machine? Can we do that? You can kind of see it there. It started. We. Uh, the harvesting machine must be out in the field somewhere, and um, this arm has already caught up on assembling melons, so it's just waiting on more melon slices. So let's go topside, and let's take a look at this machine. So obviously we've got our windmill here powering it, but we've got a day-night cycle. A day -light, blah, 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 blah. We've got a day-night detector a photoelectric detector here, and it's sitting on top of a gear shift. Let me see if I can remove that. Okay, yes, it's sitting on top of a gear shift. It's currently energized right now, but when the sun goes down, what we should see is that this gets de-energized and the clutch of the gear shift shifts gears and goes the other way. And when it does that, it should operate the harvesting machine and it will go in one direction, and then when the sun comes back up, it will return to the uh, to the start position and just wait. Because nether wart takes a while to grow, to mature. So we don't need a ton of it, and we're just going to use it for trading basically here. So we just we don't really need a ton of it. So this thing doesn't have to operate as often as this one here has to operate. Before the sun goes down, and before we get a chance to see that thing switch direction. Let's go ahead and take a look around this place. So obviously we've got some villagers that we can trade with here. I've already been working these guys with zombies. You can see the tracks for moving them around, moving the zombies around. This was sort of the experimentation here. I've got other villagers and these guys, I may utilize them. I'm not sure. We'll see. I, I made this place thinking I would need a whole crap ton of room but it really hasn't I really haven't needed this much room I just I've made it way too big so I've got this extra space here that I'm going to try to find a way to use and I've got as well I've got our villager delivery system here which goes to our villager breeder over the hill which you've seen and if we look underground we've got our path to the nether We've got our path to the old uh, vegetable sorting area, which still got plenty of stuff for us. We wanted access to that. Plus, we've got access to the villager breeder right here. Or, yeah, the actual breeder. Okay, those guys are sleeping. It's 7.30, so the light should be low enough that the machine should have switched directions. We'll see. But we've got it upstairs that it turns out I'm really not going to be able to use. I just don't have the need for it. I thought we'd need way more villagers, but really don't. Not yet, anyway. We've got a third floor as well. Maybe find some way to furnish it. Not sure yet. Maybe put an enchanting table in here or something. Not sure. Ideas in the, in the uh, comments. Love to hear them. All right, so let's take a look. Let's see if this thing has finally switched directions. Yes, it has. There we go. Awesome. I love it. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay, so now it's going to end up sitting here. Let's take a look. What time is it? 2100? Okay, so we picked up five bits of nether wart. Not too shabby. 
five stacks. So come morning, once the sun comes up, this should, in theory, come back down here and drop its items off. And the way we can make that happen is go to sleep. So let's go upstairs and go to sleep. All right, let's see it drop off its stuff. Oh, right, of course. It's going to take it forever to, to get down here. But you know what? That's all right. But there we go. So we got our nether wart farm working and dovetailed very nicely with the other items here. Looks pretty good, I think. I like the way this came out. So yeah, the whole point being just so we have enough items. Oh, you know what? Let me dump some of this off here. Just so we have enough stuff that we can trade with the villagers and get a whole freaking lot of emeralds that we'll use for Lord knows what. I haven't figured that out yet. I mean, we're on a single player server, so it's like, <laughs> what's the use of all this? Meh, I don't know. It's fun. But as you can see, I've collected up a pretty nice group of emeralds here. Uh, we could build a beacon out of it if we really wanted to. But yeah, so it's it's stupid easy. I'd say the villager trading is really OP. I think a few people have said it, or even heard it them mentioned on Hermitcraft. It is, I have to agree, it is OP. But anyway, that's what I've been up to with the Create mod. And I hope you found the information on filters interesting. And again, hopefully by now you've seen maybe a, uh, maybe a time lapse, I hope. I don't know. Again, I, I'm not sure why OBS was acting up. I think it was an OBS problem because I made a couple changes and I don't really, they weren't educated changes. Not really. I just changed a couple things for gits and shiggles and seems to be working okay. So Lord willing and the creek don't rise. You're watching a decent video right now. That's not too herky jerky. So who knows? Anyway, but Hopefully in the future, I will be doing some more streams. If you notice, I've started doing some streams with the game Descent. Descent 2, rather. And it's just something different. Some way to interact with people. I love it. And also, come October 12th, they said that YouTube is going to be opening up the Community tab. The Community... Uh, is that what it's called? Community tab? It's going to be opening up the Community post option to channels with 500 subs and above and we have just hit 600 not too long ago and i don't think i mentioned that so thank you guys for bringing this channel up to that level i appreciate that so but it will mean i'll be able to interact with you in other ways maybe set up some polls ask some questions you know questions and answers stuff like that that would be very cool i'd love to do that but we'll see how it goes but anyway, yeah, if, you, if you like what you see, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, go to the description and join the Discord server. I'd love to hear from you. And um, if you've got suggestions, leave them in the comments. You know, ideas. And we'll see where we can go in the future. All right, you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao.